Hello guys and welcome in today's episode. I'm overly excited to give you today and I cannot believe the words coming out of my mouth. This ARC GPU from Intel of all manufacturers. I am overly excited about this GPU because first of all, it is a GPU from another manufacturer. So we're not talking about Nvidia or AMD anymore. This is Intel. And for me, it's actually Intel breaking news because I was waiting for such a GPU from Intel even since the GPU apocalypse uh, that everybody was dreading. And uh, well, of course, now uh, they're on the market. So uh, I think it's high time that we see exactly what Intel is capable of doing with this ARC GPU that they have uh, just uh, released to the public. And I am overly excited because the specs should point us in a direction of very good performance for not that much price uh, that you have to pay in comparison of course to Nvidia and AMD. So this 750 series, this is actually not made by Intel. This is made by ASRock and the name of the GPU right here is actually the ASRock OC Challenger Edition. This features, uh, well, eight gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. And I'm actually very excited about the GPU because first of all, it's running on the six nanometer node. So the GPU die in here is based on the six nanometer silicon, which is actually quite impressive. It should allow it to have great performance for a very little power draw. So that gets me excited. And second of all, it will allow this GPU to have a high operating uh, GPU frequency. So that's why you will see with this GPU that its base frequency is of 2200 megahertz and the boost can go all the way up to 2400 megahertz. In my review that I have here, in my uh, well GPU that I have right here, you'll see later on, tweaking the OC settings around in the proprietary software from Intel, I was able to get the GPU all the way up to 2600 megahertz. And that blew my mind because this six nanometer node actually sits in between the new 40 series right now, which is a uh, four nanometer node and uh, well, the uh, series from before the 30 series, which actually sits on an eight nanometer node. The reason why I keep bringing this up and comparing it to GPUs that I have here on the channel is because this is the most powerful GPU that I have available to me and it is not a sluggish beast. This is the MSI 3090 and uh, well it offers a lot of performance but I'm starting to see a trend here where older GPUs like this one because it's slowly getting old are starting to slowly get overpassed by newer well thinner lighter better behaving GPUs and of course less expensive. So it's time to plug it in and see exactly how high or how low maybe we should set our expectations about this GPU.
Oh my God, you guys, this is not a break for a sponsor right here. This is just a break uh, for me as a human being, thanking each and every one of you guys for your continued support for this here channel. I cannot believe that the channel reached 900 subscribers. It doesn't mean anything in YouTube terms, but it definitely means something to me at a personal level. And I can't thank each and every one of you guys uh, enough for your continued support and comments and sharing and subscribing to the channel here. And what I want to say next is moving onwards in 2023, I'll continue to base this channel on its two most important pillars. First of all, being the honesty and transparency in all my reviews of all the products here on the channel and second of all to do unbiased uh, reviews of all the products because I am buying all these products with my own money so I am definitely the same as you guys where I review all the products in an honest way and I will let you guys know ultimately uh, all the good and the bad and let you guys decide for yourself if those products are good for your um, for your setup once again guys thank you so very much for being so awesome and now let's carry on with the video I'll now like to talk about a little bit about the overall design choice that Intel went with with ASRock when uh, designing this GPU right here I'm not a huge fan of this design that they have went with of course this ultimately comes down to you and your preference but uh, what you can expect is definitely to find a lot of plastic on the front here I have here a neodymium uh, magnet and it definitely doesn't stick to anything and if you move it around the fan uh, I'm not really sure how well this picks up but definitely the the fan or I should say the fan header catches onto the magnet uh, but uh, yeah this this is plastic on the front here so don't expect any heat dissipation coming from the front of the GPU and neither can you expect any heat dissipation coming from the back of this here GPU because once again this is plastic so this is not gonna dissipate any sort of heat if I stick it up to the um, screw over there as you can see the magnet sticks to the screws but uh, otherwise it, it sounds like plastic it is plastic after all um, not that it would, it, it would actually need that much heat dissipation the TDP of this GPU right here is only 225 watts and the cooler that they went with it's an absolute behemoth of a cooler and as you can see the PCB actually um, it is very small in comparison to the overall cooler I would say that the cooler is maybe 25% bigger than the PCB so this is something that they have went with uh, in uh, in designing the thermal solution for the GPU it does have four and as you can see uh, right here it does have four overall copper heat pipes that come uh, and uh, come straight across the GPU die and this is definitely okay but you won't run into any sort of thermal limitations with this GPU anytime soon because as I've said the TDP is quite low for the overall chunky um, heat sink that they have went with on a more important note I would like to point out the four types of output that they went with with this GPU uh, I looked it up on GPU Z actually they say that for the Challenger OC which is this card right here they should have three uh, display port outs and one HDMI out and actually my sample right here has two HDMI outs and two display ports uh, the display port should be a 2.0 display port and the HDMI should be HDMI 2.1 on both of these ports right here but definitely yeah i don't know if there was a split in the production or what's happening if you know a bit more info about that i would encourage you to leave your comments down in the box below but the product that i have right here uh, definitely has two display ports and two hdmi outputs another quick thing to mention here is that this has no leds so for all of you guys who want to make your setup look nice and pretty you're not going to get this with this GPU right here. What you are going to get, in my uh, fair opinion, is that you're definitely going to get a lot of performance for not a lot of money, which is a good thing. Connectors, it has two 8-pin connectors. This is a bit different than from the Founders Edition uh, from Intel, where it has one 6-pin six, six and one 8-pin connector. But I think that the overall two 8-pin connectors are definitely enough. And, uh, well, it helps this GPU moves along and reach a higher potential than the manufacturer gave it. So, as I've said before, doing some tuning on this GPU, I've actually managed to get it all the way up to 2600 megahertz, which for me is insane because that's the level that you would reach with a 4090. And you're going to reach this with something that just came out from Intel and uh, it delivers a lot of power for not a lot of money. Guys, thank you so very much for choosing to watch today's video with me. You're being absolutely fantastic and marvelous. And uh, don't forget that you can hit me up in the comment section down below if you want to see some reviews of some preferred uh, products. Uh, so yeah, we can definitely do, do some polls in the future. So if you want to see some specific reviews, hit me up in the boxes down below. And same as always, I'll do my best to answer each and every one of you. Until next time, guys, continue being awesome. Thank you and see you guys in the next one. So with this Intel R GPU, something that's being recommended ever since you're uh, firing up the install for the updating drivers and uh, well the updated software 
for the GPU, it's uh, you'll see right there a hint that basically says Intel recommends that you uh, enable the resizable bar. So I'm going to show you how you can do this. Uh, well, of course, I'm running a different BIOS probably than yours. I'm on the MX, uh, MAGX 570 Tomahawk uh, motherboard right here. So uh, the settings might be a bit different for you, but definitely the settings uh, should be available for you regardless if you're running Intel or AMD as a platform. So I will go here into settings and then I'll go over to the advanced tab and right over here somewhere you should be able to find something like PCI subsystems or something along that line and once you go into that you will find the resizable bar support and you should definitely for me it was disabled and I've definitely enabled this um, so yeah go ahead and enable it and once you have done that you can uh, opt out of the uh, of the uh, BIOS right here and have a restart of the PC and uh, yeah you should be getting more performance for free in a way if you're a bit unsure on how this resizable bar business works it's definitely really easy imagine that you have eight gigabytes of ram on your gpu or maybe you're not even referencing this gpu this works with any type of gpu but all the computational uh, arithmetics that goes on on your ram it goes out into chunks of 256 megabytes if you don't enable this resizable bar so what that um, what that what that makes is actually creating a uh, traffic jam so to say in your computational um, workload so that's why you have a drop in fps whenever you're running games and with this resizable bar enabled, what you are actually allowing the CPU to do, you're allowing it to actually access all the memory all at once uh, for uh, whatever task int intensive processes you have thrown on to your GPU. So that basically increases the overall FPS in games, for instance, because it has access to all of its uh, memory available to it from the GPU all at the same time. So now that we have Windows running up with the Intel Arc 750 with the resizable bar enabled, uh, what you can go ahead and do is actually go into your Intel R control uh, center. So this is just, I don't know, my personal opinion is that it is a knockoff after the NVIDIA GeForce Now. But uh, yeah, definitely here you have access to everything like your drivers and your current driver. And if you have updates and stuff like that, all your games, your game library is here. And definitely the most important one is the performance tab where you can actually uh, tweak the settings and you can actually do some uh, overclocking on your GPU. Because I have definitely tried it first with MSI Afterburner. This is my go-to software. And the software does recognize that it is an Intel Arc 750 graphics but I don't have anything on it. It doesn't show the GPU clock, it doesn't show voltage, it doesn't show memory, it doesn't show anything. I can't do any OC on it. It's basically locked or it doesn't really know and I am running the latest software on MSI. So this might be a bit uh, too new of a GPU for MSI uh, at the moment. So that's why uh, my go-to for this GPU was actually using um, using the uh, well included software from Intel over here. You'll definitely see in the videos or I should say in the footage of the games uh, prior that there were some discrepancies on the memory side of the GPU. It was actually showing like using more than nine gigabytes of memory. It doesn't have like it, it has eight. So it can use nine. Definitely MSI doesn't know what's happening with this GPU. So for the moment, what I can advise is definitely use the Intel R control for your, all, uh, all of your OC settings. Um, as you know, not all GPUs are made equal. So what I was able to achieve with mine was to increase shortly the voltage. Um, what I should say, the GPU power limit to around 200 watts and overall the boost performance, I've increased it to another uh, 65%, uh, or I should say 65 megahertz here. But uh, yeah, um, I will revert, I'm, I will not apply anything right now. I will fire up a very demanding title for this GPU, and that was Dying Light 2, running in 1440p. And then I will tweak the settings a little bit here and see exactly if we can get, if we can get anything better out of it, running with some OCs on top of the OC version that this GPU already is. Right, so here we are running 1440p and definitely everything is set to ultra high or as um, top as it would go. The upscaler mode here is set on FSR quality, ultra quality I should say. And if we go over into the advanced tab, as you can see, everything is running on uh, ultra ray tracing, very high, high. So as much as, uh, as high as it will go and running the uh, latest uh, DirectX ultimate ray tracing enabled here. So let's go ahead and fire up the game and see exactly how it behaves with the stock uh, configuration. Another thing that I should do is actually to activate MSI Afterburner because what Intel can't do for you is show you an FPS meter in the games. 
but we'll rely on the FPS meter from the uh, from the MSI version of things here and as you can see we're already past the 8 gigabytes uh, threshold over here running this GPU so MSI has absolutely no idea what's happening it shows like uh, 90 I don't know 9.5 gigabytes at this point but definitely if we have a reference over here we can see that the GPU activity sits at 99% and we are using it about uh, <laughs> even this is a bit off 8.3 gigabytes of memory on this card so uh yeah whatever i don't know uh we know that uh, this uh intel card actually features just 8 gigabytes of uh well vram memory so here we are running 1440p everything set on ultra ray tracing enabled dying light 2 and as you can see we're running the gpu clock at 2400 megahertz so this is basically its boosted uh, version because it sits, uh, well, it's well, its standard sits at 2200 megahertz and it, it looks okay, but it feels a bit sluggish. I mean, of course it feels a bit sluggish. Uh, how could it not feel a bit sluggish? Um, let's just jump on the ledge here, there we go. Okay, try to do some running sessions here and get the overall vibe of how this feels. Uh, uh, it feels like 27 FPS, close to 30, I would give it that. So MSI, I think it's actually pretty uh, dead on with its FPS meter over there. But uh, yeah, uh, depending on what you're doing. So if you look up, for instance, as soon as you look up, everything feels buttery smooth, 60 FPS. So this is the refresh rate of this monitor. But as soon as you start looking down, everything becomes a bit, uh, wow, <laughs> uh, stuttery, yeah, too stuttery anyway. So yeah, this is not a smooth 28 to low 30 FPS. I can tell you that for sure. So let's start tweaking the um, Intel settings a bit here and see exactly if we can get anything better out of it. So fire up the Intel Arc, I don't know every time it actually asks me if I want to fire it up, although it's already fired up. Go into the performance tab over here, you have performance tuning, click on configure, and there you go. Uh, I would leave this off, so don't apply the settings on system boot, so in case you do something and you crash the GPU, you don't want the, those settings that actually crash your GPU to actually crash it each and every time you boot into Windows, just because you enable the settings. So leave it off, and as soon as you want to fire up a game, uh, just go ahead and do it manually once again. I mean, it takes 30 seconds, so uh, for 30 seconds, you're pretty much covered. If you crash the GPU, you restart, and you're good to go, you're back on the default settings. So uh, GPU performance boost, let's go ahead and hit it at the uh, 65. I've tested it out uh, off camera, and I know that works for it. And I'll bump it up here over to 200 watts and see exactly what we can get. We hit apply, and as soon as we hit apply, we're back into the game. We are having some 33, 34 FPS. Okay, so we are getting somewhere. And right here you can see the GPU clock. It's almost reaching 2600 megahertz. It's at 2597 right now. And uh, overall the GPU power is still sitting at around 160 uh, watts, same as before. But I will tell you what, it's, it's, it's a lot smoother right now. Uh, even though the meter just kind of drops to 28, but then just uh, randomly spikes up to 37 FPS, it feels smoother. It feels, I don't know, 50% smoother or more. So it definitely, um, it definitely feels like an improvement having an extra OC on this GPU. So uh, yeah, I could recommend you to actually do that. It doesn't cost you anything. I mean, in terms of power, I see it going up slightly to about just about 180 watts. So 20 watts more of power on your GPU can actually deliver a bit more performance with 200 uh, extra megahertz on the GPU side. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with the results. And I would definitely recommend you do, um, well, you do an OC on this GPU.